All right, welcome back. Before we went for a break, uh, Chalo was explaining to us about how propolis is uh, collected from this. And you are continuing to explain to us the importance of uh, propolis. Yes. Continue. Just uh, let us know the other advantages of this. Yes. Now, yeah, propolis, as I mentioned, has been used many years uh, to handle respiratory challenges. Mm -hmm. But uh, the bad thing with uh, many beekeepers uh, is that they don't know that uh, it's valuable. And every time they are harvesting, you realize that they have scrapped it and thrown it away. And uh, in the modern science, many of these pharmaceutical companies, they use propolis to make over a thousand different kinds of drugs. As a matter of fact, Kenya imports uh, over 95% of the propolis that is used in the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. And as we are on a drive to talk to our farmers all over the six countries where we are, telling them that uh, they need to get, or rather, get now in the production of propolis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are using propolis ourselves. And could it be that, that that's why we have these products here? Yes. Propolis. We are using okay. propolis mm -hmm. to make uh, several products. We have now, the, for example, the propolis tincture. The propolis tincture is very helpful for anybody with gas, okay. anybody with acid, mm -hmm. anybody with coughing, anybody with flu. And even for the small children, you just get a, a drop under the tank. And uh, within a very short period, it sorts it completely. Mm -hmm. We also have the propolis honeys. Mm -hmm. The propolis honeys that uh, somebody will take a, a, a teaspoonful in the morning and in the evening if they've got a TB, asthma and all that. And uh, any of those respiratory challenges. Okay. At the same time, we're also using it to make the, the, the lip balms. Mm. The lip balms mm -hmm. that are very, very good uh, for most of our sisters. They like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are using it as well to make uh, creams using it to make it creams like for example now this is wax and propolis uh, propolis and turmeric cream okay that is very helpful for that person who have been having a lot of challenge with the uh, hackney and all that mm -hmm. it, it helps uh, it, it works with hackney mm -hmm. uh, very 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 fast all right yeah all right now let's move to pollen yes let's move to pollen because yes. i've seen bee pollen yes i've seen uh, we have bee pollen glow tea yes so just explain to us how pollen is gotten yes. and how are uh, you using it yes now pollen is the the yellow substance you find on the legs of bees mm -hmm. when uh, when you look at the grass and in the morning you find some a bees on the grass with something yellow. And that is pollen. And that is the male part of a flower. And when bees go to their, to their flowers, they'll pick two things. They'll drink nectar, which they use it now to make honey. Yes. But now they also carry pollen, which they'll use it to make food for their young ones mm -hmm. in the hive. Mm -hmm. But now this pollen has got a special protein that is not found in any, in any meat. It's not found in any legume. God in his wisdom only put it in pollen. Mm -hmm. And now what happens is uh, we will find so many uh, multi-level marketing companies when they come to Africa, they will tell people why people should use these supplements for pollen. And many people would definitely would, would want to buy, but now they can't get in any supermarket, they have to buy it from these multi-level marketing companies. Yes. Now that has made uh, Africa to make uh, the beekeeping industry in China to thrive. As a matter of fact now, uh, China is the largest beekeeping nation in the world, and one of the reasons is because of Africa. And so we are on a drive, and we are talking to all our farmers, and we are telling them the easiest way to make money in Africa is not to plant maize when it rains, mm -hmm. because that's what many people think. They plant maize and beans and all that. We tell them the easiest way now to make money would be now them to engage even in bee pollen, because the bee pollen is the easiest product to harvest. You don't even need to touch the beehive. To open the beehive, you get what we call the pollen collector. This is the pollen tray. This is a pollen trap. And now, so this is the tray. Th that is a tray. And now this is the this is this this is the trap. And what will happen if you want to have a pollen? Then you get both of them, and uh, you get both of them, and you fix them at the entrance of the beehive. Mm -hmm. At the entrance of the beehive, you fix using the the the, 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 the screws. So that when the bees have to come and enter the hive, they have to struggle. When you look at this, they are very tiny, yes, the holes. They are very, very tiny. Yes, uh -huh. they are very tiny. So the bee will have to struggle to enter. Uh -huh. And as they struggle to enter, the pollen is scrapped. Okay. And when it's scrapped now, it later on you come falls. and remove, it falls here. Okay. You come and remove it, uh -huh. and you get your pollen. Uh -huh. uh, the beautiful thing about pollen, if I could mention, is that pollen you can harvest after every two days. 
you actually can have it, or you can skip one day or you can skip two days. Uh, that you put the pollen collector, you get to the pollen in the evening, then you, you remove the pollen collector and tomorrow you place in BFB. And then the third day you place it again in BFA or BFC. And what it means is that you can harvest at least between 100 to 150 times in a year. And each harvest you can get around 50 grams. So if you harvested 100 times, then you get around 5 kilograms from one knife in a year. Savannah honey, we are buying a kilogram at uh, 6,800. And what it translates to is over 30,000 shillings from bee pollen from one hive, which is slightly lower than uh, the propolis. Propolis, you get 1.5 kilograms per harvest. You can harvest minimum of 20 times in a year. That's around 30 kilograms. And a kilogram now we are buying at 1,900 shillings. Now that translates to around 57,000 from one hive. And um, pollen uh, has got, uh, they call it a superfood. They say it's a, it's, a, it's a super medicine. It is medication for many diseases. Like for example, we are using it to make a medicine for high blood pressure. Many people use this one and within maximum three days, their pressure would, would come. Only that they have to continue. Mm -hmm. We are also using it to make the glow tea for somebody who wants their skin to, to yes. glow. Mm -hmm. And also for, uh, for diabetes. Mm -hmm. We are also using it for inflammation, mm -hmm. uh, arthritis and such. All right. And now, there's this interesting uh, tray uh, over here. Yes. And I remember, I think there's a very interesting story about this. So yes. Just, uh, <laughs> even as we are now trying to uh, come to even a close of this conversation. Yes. Uh, I believe there's something interesting about this. Right. Okay. Right. This is the Royal Jelly Harvesting Kit. Mm -hmm. uh, Royal Jelly is the queen's food. When, when somebody opens a beehive, you would see some small honey that looks like milk. Mm. That is the queen's food. And that is what makes the queen to stay, to live for five years. While the normal bee stays for around 40 days. The difference is because of the royal jelly. Mm. And uh, the same thing applies to those people who used to do beekeeping traditionally. They were not doing the beekeeping we are doing nowadays for getting honey to put on the bread for breakfast in the morning. Those guys were smashing, they, you could see them eating everything, even with the combs. And as a result of that, you could see whitish things even flowing on their, on their hands. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, they eat a lot of royal jelly. As a result of that, you realize that guy is even very strong at the age of 90 years, even the age of 100 years. And um, we've got uh, now uh, even the, the late Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of England, used to eat two, uh, uh, two, 250 grams per day. And that could explain how you could see a very strong the of the royal jelly. Uh -huh. And uh, it has made now royal jelly to be very valuable because many people don't want to die soon. <laughs> so many people now are getting now the supplements mm -hmm. and it has made royal jelly to be very expensive. A kilogram now is going between 35,000 and 85,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. One kilogram. And thus, we are training our farmers how to harvest it. And we are buying a kilogram at 38,000. And what we are doing now, we also go ahead now to make the supplements. And as, uh, as, as we have already the supplements here, um, the beautiful thing with the, um, the bad thing with royal jelly is that it's very perishable, just like milk. But now we go ahead and make the supplements so that now somebody can even stay with it, even for two years. Taking a tablet in the morning, tablet in the evening. And when you see them 40 years from today, they are still very young and very strong. And uh, the only thing with it is relatively I would say expense, but relatively, uh, you know, higher in value. This goes, these 150 tablets goes for 7,200. And um, what somebody will do, uh, if I will explain briefly, is that uh, the Chinese have made what we are calling the artificial queen cells. When you look at a comb, those holes, we call them cells, because that's where life starts. Yes. And what the Chinese have done, they've gone to the factory and they've made one exactly like where the, the house of the queen, the home of the queen. And uh, these are now the, the artificial queen cells, which now, if you want to harvest a lot of royal jelly, mm -hmm. what you will do, you will pick the frame. Mm -hmm. You pick the frame from the hive. Mm -hmm. And when you pick it from the, from the hive, you now place them 
you, you, you now place them in the hive uh, uh, from the underside. And when the, the, when the bees come and find the, the, the artificial queen cells, they will just ask themselves, how come that there are queen's homes here, but there are no queens inside? Because as soon as they look at this, they are 100% sure that this is the home of a queen. So what they will do, uh, they will now go and pick the larva, fix them, and when they fix them, they know for the larva to hatch into a queen, she must be fed on royal jelly. Mm. And so they will know what they will do, they will now go and make a lot of royal jelly and now fill it here. Then after nine days, come with what we call the royal jelly harvesting kit. You now come and suck, and then now you place it the, 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 inside the harvesting kit, this other side, and then you put it in a fridge. Mm -hmm. Then that point now, you call us. Then we come for it. Uh, and then also maybe I could talk briefly about the, the bee venom. Yeah, the bee venom is the, is the most expensive product in beekeeping. The world market now, uh, a gram is going for 30,000 shillings. One gram. Wow. One but, gram. Uh, yes. But us here, because uh, of the market issues, we buy at 4,000. And uh, what's the importance of the venom? The venom. Mm. Um, venom, many, many people have been asking us to take to them bees. We carry bees using a bee cage to take to them when they are suffering from arthritis to bite them where... Uh, the joints. So if you're suffer, you suffering from arthritis and disease, or this joint would bring you bees and they bite you here. They bite you here for, for, for three times in a day, for three days. Then you, you are healed of your arthritis. Okay. But now, we are not doing that. Now we have got the, the venom collector. Would, we have got the venom collector. Uh, that when you switch on, when you switch on the battery, when you switch on the battery, you would now go ahead and place this one at the entrance of the beehive. Of the beehive. Yes. Now, when you look at these tiny wires, they will create a small current. Mm -hmm. They will create a small current that will irritate one or two bees that they are at the entrance, at the entrance of the beehive. And when they are irritated, they feel so bad that they come and sting. When they sting, they, they leave the venom there. Mm -hmm. When they leave it there, you give it, uh, it, will, it will make the other bees, all of them, to hear that smell. smell. And then they'll know that they're under attack. So all of them will come. And when they come, they fill this place with venom. Within 45 minutes, one hour, and one hour and a half, you come and scrap it. When you scrap it, now you, you, you get it, and, 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 and now you put it in a, in a container like this. Mm -hmm. And then you make sure that now you also cover the container. Now this is like five grams of the venom. Of the venom. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, as we are buying at 4,000. So this is uh, from the farmer, this is 20,000 uh, uh, now from the farmer. Yeah, so we are using the venom now to make what we are calling the venom honey. This venom honey, we, we mix the venom at a certain percentage at a very, with honey at a very high pressure. And the beauty of it is that now it is used to help uh, arthritis, to treat arthritis. It is being used now to, to lower the viral load for HIV. And it's also now being used to treat uh, breast cancer. Now, we are also using it to make bee venom cream. The bee venom cream is the most expensive cream in the world. This size, 400 grams, would go for 23,000 in the, in, the, in the market would go for 23,000 in the market. But as we are making it locally, and we are selling this one at 5,800. And uh, we also have got a smaller, um, smaller sizes, uh, like this one for 200 grams, going for 2,500. So, uh, Chalo, even as we wrap up this yes. conversation right yes. now, uh, the future of beekeeping, yes. a farmer who wants to get into this, yes. um, just give us your parting shots, um, even the advantage of uh, getting into this type of farming? Yes, I would wish to say that uh, beekeeping is one of the undervalued uh, uh, enterprises, which are uh, one, the easiest to handle. Because for instance, if you uh, start this project, you don't need to be there. It doesn't need your time. They don't need any inputs. There's nothing you are going to the, to the agrovet to buy. And also, uh, when, when, when you establish it, it's, a, it's a, an enterprise that always the products have market. 
Like for example, Kenya imports 80% of the honey we consume here, mainly from Tanzania. And why we're importing is because the production is very low. And so uh, by encouraging people to engage in this, it will also help them, even in the pollination in their farms and the production will, will go slightly higher. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we've been doing, we've been running a mantra, we say, don't let your land stay idle, invest in modern beekeeping. And what this means is, even if you're in Nairobi, even if you're in Mombasa and you're busy in your work, as we deliver the hives, we install them, we follow them up, you don't need to be there. And then we bank the money for you mm -hmm. because we give you a five-year contract. And um, we would uh, encourage everybody to talk to us. We work with them because what you can put in uh, like space of where I'm seated, between where I'm seated and where you are, this is like, uh, like three beehives. <laughs> and the income it can give you okay. is more than somebody has done uh, five acres of maize mm -hmm. in a year. Mm -hmm. So it's a real lucrative enterprise that many people have not known and we would wish them to know. All right. Yeah. All right, Charlo, thank you so much for joining us on AgriTalk today. You've heard it from him saying about how don't leave your land idle. Invest in modern day beekeeping. All right, we've come to the end of AgriTalk today. We've been speaking about this, uh, this other side of beekeeping that involves propolis, that involves venom, that involves uh, pollen from bees. And I believe you've learned something today. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Let us meet next time right here on KTN Farmers TV.